Good evening. Welcome back to another video. Um, so you might already have realized, looking there behind me, that uh, tonight I've come out to the beautiful Bedruthan Steps on the North Cornish coast, just past Newquay. Um, and the intention tonight is to try and shoot the sea pinks that are now uh, in bloom along the, uh, the top of the cliffs. Um, always a always a favourite subject, uh, and what a beautiful place to do it, and, and what a fantastic evening. I mean, look at this. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll come round. There's the sun shining. Um, I think that probably is uh, quite a hefty bank of cloud out on the horizon, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm I'm not really expecting the sunset, um, but uh, I'm going to take a little wander on the cliff tops here. I'm going to see if I can find some compositions that work, um, and, and we'll see how we get on. I, I have in the past found this quite a frustrating place to try and photograph, but. Um, We'll see what we can do. We'll, we'll see what uh, what compositions we can find and what we can do with it as we go along. Uh, obviously, we can't go to the beach for two good reasons. One, the tide is in, uh, and that's never a good time to go to the beach. And secondly, the steps here that lead to the beach are still closed off, having been damaged in a storm uh, several years ago. Um, I'm sure, like many other people, I would love to know when these steps are going to reopen because I'd love to get down on that beach to be able to shoot these sea stacks from sea level. But um, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, let's go. Let's go and have a look around and see what we can find. So my plan is to make my way across the cliff tops here, uh, towards the far end of uh, Bedruthan Steps, um, so that I'll have a, a viewpoint looking back towards Newquay. And obviously as I go, if I see anything of interest, I shall stop and take some photos and uh, hopefully talk you through them. But um, for now, we're just taking that, uh, that little walk along the cliff tops. There do seem to be quite a few areas here at the moment that are fenced off, roped off, blocked off, mainly I suppose because there have been cliff falls or the cliffs are becoming dangerous. So it's uh, it's changed a little bit since the last time I was here last summer. But um, there are sea pinks around. There you go, on the cliff tops there behind me. So there's definitely some flowers here. We'll uh, just have to see what compositions we can work out. Uh, please do like and subscribe to the video and to the channel. Uh, it really does help me out and I really do appreciate you doing so. So I've got that first composition. Didn't take very long, did it? Never seems to, really. So um, if I come around, there's the camera all set up, and you can see, look, see the sea pinks just here on the cliff tops, looking absolutely gorgeous. And uh, the sea stack down there, and you know I've got a thing for sea stacks. Now, apparently all of the sea stacks here have names. Now, the little one there, the little pointed one, I believe that's called Queen Bess. I could be wrong, but I can't remember for the life of me what the rest of them are called. But uh, I'll have a look when I get home, and. Um, when I, when I do the description, I'll put it in the description and let you know what they're all called. But let me buzz you around a second and take a look at what I'm, I'm dealing with here. So that's pretty much the composition we're dealing with. It's a little bit higher than that, and a little bit uh, a little bit wider on the back of the camera screen, but uh, that's pretty much the idea, having those uh, three C stacks in there. Like I said, can't remember what they're, they're all called, but uh, I'll, I'll let you know in the description. But as you can see, look, see all these beautiful sea pinks now on the top of the cliffs, and, um, and these yellow flowers now, as we've already discussed in uh, in woodland photography, I've no idea what uh, different flowers are, but um, if anyone can tell me what these are, I'd be interested to know, so that I can, again, put it in the description for the video, I suppose. Um, yeah, absolutely no idea what they are, but it's looking beautiful, looking really, really nice. So I've already taken that shot. Uh, my settings, I'm on one sixth of a second, ISO 100 and F11. So I will pop that up on the screen for you right now. Should have mentioned while I was talking you through that image that uh, I was also using my Nisi True Color Circular Polarizer, which uh, I, I used to take some of the glare off of the water and just darken it down a little bit. Uh, and I was also using my Nisi Three Stop Medium Graduated Neutral Density Filter again to help control and balance the light in the sky. Um, without the filters, I had a couple of areas that were a little bit blown out, and I don't really want them blown out. I want them, to, you know. I want them to look, look nice. Quite often with blown out highlights, you have trouble recovering the detail in there. So it's just easier to use the filter and uh, deal with that in camera rather than trying to deal with it in post-production. But uh, I've got to mention that. So I thought I'd better just let you know that those were the filters I was using. So I think I found my next composition. Uh, look at all this behind me. It's just I don't think I've ever seen so much pink here, and you know, it, it, 
this time of the year. I, I've been there a few times before trying to shoot the sea pinks and I've never seen this quantity of it. But uh, look at this patch just here. Look, look at this, look at how vibrant that is. Absolutely amazing. So this, this is the, the scene that I have sh set up behind me. You can see there's the, there's the camera. So um, the, the composition is, is, is angled down. So that I'm, I'm taking in the sea pinks in the foreground here uh, and then getting the sea stacks in, in the backdrop. Now I find this quite a difficult place to shoot because um, I like to have the gaps in, in between objects when I'm, when I'm shooting these specific things like sea stacks uh, and you just can't do it here because they overlap each other so uh, what I tend to do is to try and get this big one out on its own isolate it a little bit and then you've got the others back here that you, you can see them but not in the detail that I'd really like you to be able to see them um, it's just one of those things it's a compromise everything, everything is a compromise isn't it but uh, you know when, when you're dealing with a foreground like that with that sort of color in it absolutely amazing just look at the color of that sea even though that sun has pretty much gone look there we are look there's the sun there's that bank of cloud so yeah i, I don't think there's going to be a sunset but uh you know you don't really need it when you've got those those blue tones in the sky and you've got a little bit of texture to it and a bit of mood to it um if that was just flat and gray and it would just be nasty but at least it's got a little bit of something to it that makes the scene a little bit more interesting uh, and talking of that scene i'll turn you around so you can have a better look at it there we go so that's that's pretty much what i'm trying to do with the uh, with the shot so obviously getting those sea pinks in the foreground is the, is the main interest uh, and then we've got those sea stacks in the background to uh, to make things a little bit more interesting and as i said there's there's that bit of sky now that wind you may have noticed has gotten up a little bit so i don't think i'm gonna be able to do much in the way of long exposure shots tonight because obviously the, the flowers are moving all over the place um which is a bit of a disappointment because obviously i love doing some long exposure work but um that's just one of those things so again, for this shot, I'm using my AC True Color circular polarizer to uh, take the light off that water. Uh, and I'm also using, again, the three stop medium graduated neutral density filter, which just helps to balance and control the, the light in that sky. As I said before, rather than having to worry about it in post-processing, I like to do as much as I can in camera. So I've already taken that shot. Uh, that shot is ISO 100. I'm at F11 and the shutter speed is one fifth of a second. So I will pop that up on the screen for you now to have a look at. That wind is totally make life difficult for me every time I try and set the tripod up so that I can actually uh, talk to you and show you what I'm doing. It, um, it just it tries to blow it all over. Um, it's just one of those things. Um, as you can see, as you notice over my shoulder here, uh, I've recomposed this, this shot into a portrait image. Um, Settings are very much the same as they were before. True Color CPL, three stop GND, uh, ISO 100, F11. Um, I find that's the sweet spot for this 24 to 105 lens is, is at F11. Uh, and, but the shutter speed this time is one fourth of a second. So uh, I'll pop that one up on the screen for you now as well. So move around a little bit further now we were uh, we were over there just now and uh, a little bit further around yeah we were over there just now so I've, I've come back along the path and uh, spotted this little composition here with these uh, this little cluster down here sea pinks with some white flowers in there some yellow flowers got the camera set up in a, in a portrait orientation this time and uh, I've already taken the shot which I'll pop on the screen for in a moment but I thought you might like to see there's a hole in that uh, in that big rock down there so I'm just wondering whether it's going to collapse at some point or whether we end up with a, a nice big sea arch that would be um, pretty cool we don't seem to have many of those around the Cornish coast obviously there's the Ennis Dodden arch at Land's End but uh, other than that I don't think we've got much in the way of, uh, of sea arches so if that developed to an arch that'd be pretty cool but uh, Here's that image. So I've just been headed back across towards uh, the, the entrance to Pedruton Steps where the van is parked. And uh, I decided to take a little footpath that came off on the, on the side, a little bit off the beaten track. Followed it around. I was hoping to get a view of the sea stacks on the other side with some sea pinks in the foreground, but there wasn't really anything there that worked. But having followed the path around, uh, I've come around and as you can see, We've got these three sea stacks down here, which are, are nicely isolated from this position. Now, I've not been up on this little bit of the, the cliff top before. Um, obviously, there's plenty of plenty more exploring for me to do here as well. So um, I've managed to get that shot. I mean, I don't know if you can see there behind me. There is a little bit of some sea pinks on the on the cliff top as well. So uh, I've taken a couple of shots in both landscape and portrait, which uh, are looking quite nice. 
Uh, I have managed to get a little bit of a longer exposure on them this time, and that's simply because where I'm standing here on the clifftop now is a little bit more sheltered. We're just a little bit lower down. The wind is coming across from behind me, uh, and so there's a lot less movement here in the foreground. So I've been able to get a, a bit of a longer exposure. So I've got a, a half a second of exposure on both of these images. Uh, I'm at F11 for both of these images. ISO is 100. Um, again, true color, Nisi true color CPL, three stop, medium GND on there. Uh, and I will pop those images up on the screen for you to have a look at now. go one more shot for you before I pack up for the evening so uh, I've walked along the cliff top past the entrance to the car park uh, and come all the way around to the other side of the Druthan Steps a spot that I again for some bizarre reason I've never been to before uh, and there you can see in the backdrop behind me the uh, the actual stepping stones if you like of, of the Druthan Steps the sea stacks out there so I've been able to come down nearly onto the, the cliff edge uh, and I've got quite a good view from here to be perfectly honest with you so uh, I've, I've already taken a couple of shots I'll, I'll buzz you around a second I'll show you the composition and, and, and talk you through what I'm trying to do Firstly, look at that sky. Oh, if only that had lit up tonight, that would have been something special. Look at that, especially right over the top of the rocks, they're headed towards the, the, the cliff tops over there. Uh, off, off in the far distance, the headland you can see in the far distance, by the way, is Travaux's Head. That's uh, Travaux's Lighthouse is out there. Um, at some point, we may find a, our way out there and do a video. But for now, this is the composition that I've been working with. So I've managed to get some of this foreground in. There's some sea pinks there, as you can see. Uh, but the majority of the image is, is really the, the cove below us and the, the, the sea stacks out there. Uh, that has been a long exposure image. So that's been a, a four second exposure uh, with an f-stop of f11 uh, and, and the ISO is at 100. So uh, it's looking pretty good on the back of the screen. Like I said, I've taken a couple of shots of that. So what I'll do is I'll post those up for you to have a quick look at. That's it for another video folks i hope you've enjoyed our little visit here to the and steps i hope you've enjoyed seeing the sea pinks on the cliff tops uh, and the little bit of light that we did get for a short period of time um, please do smash a like on the video and, and consider subscribing to the channel it really does help me out feel free to share any of my videos anytime um, in the meantime thank you ever so much for your support and i'll see you all again soon